There we go. It's a newborn baby hippo that's just joined this pod. Look at that, everyone. And mom is trying to nurse that youngster. Now we know why she was so protective. She's obviously given birth a few days ago. She's then introduced the baby to the river. And now what she's trying to do is introduce her baby to her pod of hippo, to her family. And what that's causing is a little bit of investigation from all the hippos in the pod. And mom is just gnashing her teeth together and, uh, and trying her best not to put the baby in a compromised state. But just have a look at that. That is about as newborn as newborn gets. Please excuse the, uh, the shakiness on the camera. There is a mighty storm brewing out there in the morrow this afternoon. And these cameras are static cameras that don't have all the fancy toys on them, uh, keeping them stable that uh, our cameras on our cars do. So excuse the odd shake, but... Now, Monique, in London, you wanted to know if there's any tornadoes here. Monique, I'm sure there actually could be, you know. Um, tornadoes um, are called different things in different parts of the world and are accentuated by anomalies in, in, in geography or in weather patterns that, that increase the severity of these storms. Now, I, you know, the obvious, the, the best example that I know of is in, I think, the American Midwest, where you have cold air funneled by the Rockies, making it deep into uh, the central part of the continent, which is quite warm. And when this cold air and this hot air meet one another, you get these violent storms. And of course, the chance for, uh, for tornadoes is therefore increased, but also the severity of the tornadoes is increased. Everywhere else in the world, barring a few other odd places, you don't have those anomalies, those, those weather anomalies and those geographical anomalies. And so tornadoes to a, to a degree um, are common, but not as, as, uh, as devastating as what they are in the American Northwest. I could obviously, I, miss, I could be missing other parts in the world, but that is it. But we will find tornadoes here, but not as severe. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. You've also just asked a question there. Although, Alice, could I please ask that you just repeat the last bit of the question, if that's okay? I just missed the first half. Ah. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. You wanted to know if hippos have an easier life living in still water or fast-moving water. Um, I think if I were a hippo... Oh, that's a good question there, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Um, so let me say the pros of still water is that the babies don't get, you know, the chance of a baby getting swept away and swept downstream is less. Um, fast moving water also means that there'll be less hippos there. And so you don't get as many hippos con uh, congregating in the same place, which of course uh, reduces the risk of babies getting injured. Um, still water. Still water is much better from a baby's point of view. Um, and also, I suppose, from a, uh, from, you know, from a protection point of view, there's a lot more hippo with a lot more eyes and ears around. Um, as to what would be better for them, what, what would make it easier? Hmm. I think fast-moving water is easier, to be honest. Um, it's, it's definitely more of a risk for the baby, fast-moving water because baby hippo can't really swim, neither can old hippo, and that a fast current will wash young, young hippo away. But um, you don't have the proximity of so many hippo congregating in, in, in the, as you do in the stiller pools, and so the risk, the life risk to these animals is far less, if that answers your question, chitty chitty bang bang. I don't know. That's a good question. That is a very good question. Thank you. All right, we are going to be sending you three and a half thousand miles south. To